Thanks for the uh, 14 test <laughs> to get here. Appreciate it. I already had it, so I got the antibodies. Um, I caught it. I think I caught the virus back in August. I didn't uh, tell anybody. This is the first time I'm letting out the bag. I didn't get on Facebook and say, pray for me. Where are my prayer warriors? <laughs> I've never heard that term till COVID hit. Prayer warriors. <laughs> a bunch of angels up in the clouds like Braveheart. Prayer warriors. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's like when you catch it, uh, you be in denial. Like you know you got it. But that first morning, you still will convince yourself that you don't have it. So I just woke up, and I was like, I don't feel right. I must have squatted. I was doing my legs yesterday. And then you'd be like, <laughs> you'd be like I'm just going to get something to eat. I feel better when I eat. So I was by myself that morning, so I went to the pantry, and they had the, um, the, you know, the Quaker oatmeal, the, the variety pack. So it's got the three apple cinnamon. Then the three maple brown sugars, then the three packs that nobody eats, the plain packs in the middle. So I, I opened the apple cinnamon, and I'm doctoring it up. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Got the butter, put a little more sugar in it. Oh, it's going to be good. I can't wait to eat this oatmeal. I must have opened the wrong pack. So, so I, I opened it and I said, nah, that's, that's his apple cinnamon. So then I started blaming Quaker. I was like, they put, they put the plain stuff in the apple cinnamon pad. Quaker messed this up. So then I got the maple brown sugar. I couldn't taste that. And that's when I was like, all right, I must, I must have it. Then you got to start making the phone calls, telling everybody you came in contact with. And I, I was a super spreader. So I gave it to eight people that I know of. Everybody called back positive. <laughs> what do you say? My fault. Sorry, man. My fault. But like, my one buddy, Steve, got it the worst because he all Steve, I was with him 10 minutes. So I was in the car, picked me up, took me to, picked me up from the airport, took me to the hotel. We get to the hotel, and that was it, 10 minutes. So I called Steve. I said, Steve, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm positive. But I was on with you 10 minutes. Steve called me back a couple days later. I'm positive. I felt bad. And it was the the virus went through me quick. I didn't have a lot of symptoms. It was it was real quick. But called Steve like two weeks later. I felt I thought, hey man, how you holding up? It's like knives are in my throat. I can't breathe, bro. I was like, I should have called an Uber. My fault, Steve. I like I felt bad. I felt bad making my phone calls for coronavirus. I can't imagine what Magic Johnson felt like making his phone calls. When you catch it. And then you beat it, then the news don't scare you no more with their statistics. Because, you know, news will come in there, 400,000 people have died. I was like, well, I didn't. Shit. They should have had better prayer warriors. Because my prayer warriors protecting me. It's, a weird, it's, a, it's just an odd time we're living. I'm, I'm glad we're out of 2020 and we're into 2021 because 2020 was a rough I, I mean, it was a... At least it's one for the history books. I mean, years from now, they're going to learn about 2020. We had, the, well, we had the pandemic, then we had the Black Lives Matter movement, and then we had, uh, you know, the, the president that didn't want to leave. I didn't ain't, I ain't think I'd ever seen anything like that. He didn't give a reason. Just, I don't want to leave. <laughs> now, but you lost. I ain't lose, you lose. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> the marches, was, the Black Lives Matter marches was something else because... My daughter got me going to all the marches. Like my, I got three kids. And everybody knows my kids are mixed, but my daughter's the militant one in the family. Like that is definitely black woman. Hear me roar. That is, um, you know. So she, I just remember the first march we went to was back in June. We was in Sacramento, and my daughter came to my uh, my bedroom, and she's like, "Dad, can we go this tomorrow?" And she had a flyer, and I said, "Yeah, we'll go." And I didn't want nobody else to go because I didn't want it to be a, a family thing. I just wanted me and her. I could show her I'm going to support her, causes that are important to her. So we go. And we get there, and I'm thinking we're in Sacramento, about 50,000 people. Me and her just going to blend in. We're going to march. People start chanting. We're going to chant, you know. We about 10 minutes into the march. My daughter got a backpack on. I thought she brought snacks and refreshments. Also, she unzipped her backpack. She had a freaking megaphone, and she's starting the goddamn chants. <laughs> and a lot of her chants, first of all, I was like, where'd you get the megaphone? Second of all, I was like, I was thinking, um, 
Uh, most of her chants was okay, but some of them I feel like she was digging on me a little bit. Because at one point it was marching, and she was like, this didn't start last month. This started with 400 years of oppression. I was like, why are you looking at me? <laughs> Some of these Black Lives Matter marches are long, too. Like, I need the parade route before I commit. <laughs> and I haven't been to one march where it's been just black people at a Black Lives Matter march. There's been quite a few white people at all of them. Like, at least 40, 50%, everyone I've been to. But I still think there needs to be do's and don'ts. Uh, like an email should go out to white people that are going to Black Lives Matter marches of what we're allowed and not allowed to do because I don't want to offend anybody when I'm there because the one I went to, it ended in a park and a guy got on the stage and he was like, as soon as everybody done marching, we all going to come together and we're going to throw our right fists high in the sky. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed. <laughs> so I didn't go all the way up. I stopped right here just in case somebody took a picture. I said I was getting some off my shirt. That was crumb. Uh, some of these marches, man. I, you know, one I went to, they was passing out water. They had a water stand. We was, we was 20 minutes in. They was like, uh, make sure you stay hydrated. It's going to be a hot one today. I was like, how, how long is this march? That you worried about me passing out? <laughs> and I've seen, okay, so at the marches, I've seen water passed out. I've seen snacks. I've seen, like, electrolytes to put in the water. You know what I haven't seen at one Black Lives Matter march is sunscreen. And that's something white people need if we gonna be on the hot sun all day marching. Like, I want to support the cause, but I don't want to get skin cancer in the process. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm a little disappointed in some of these sunscreen companies. You're like, where the hell is Copper Tone for Black Lives Matter? All the beaches have been closed. All the pools have been closed. I know sunscreen took a hit this summer. They should have been at all the marches. I can see the commercial right now. Justice. <laughs> Equality. <laughs> Copper tone for Black Lives Matter. When you want to march and support all your black friends, but don't want to be as dark as them. Copper tone. <laughs> Sorry. There's literally a white person on the computer going, we got to turn this one off. This is, this is going too far. <laughs> Now, and not only, okay, so we've had the marches, but we're also, I've seen a lot of people, we've been knocking down a lot of those um, Confederate soldier statues. I've seen that going on. Other parts of the world are tearing down these Christopher Columbus statues. Uh, I, never, I never got the Confederate soldier statues. I never got that, because they, didn't they lose? Like, how do you get a statue for second place and there's only two teams in the game? <laughs> But people are upset about those Confederate soldier statues. And I'm just thinking in my brain, a lot of these, a lot of these small southern towns, like the statues, they're in the middle of the park or they're in front of City Hall. At some point, they're going to have to replace the statues. And I, I have some ideas myself for the replacements. Um, I think we've had male statues long enough. Let's let the females get a little shine. Let's put some female statues up. But not famous females, because you put famous people up, people get on the internet, and now it's the thing to do, bring up dirt on them, act like they weren't a good person. So you got to make it, like, generic, but an honorable profession. Like a female nurse, that'd be a good one, no one would argue with that. Or like a female school teacher, not one of the students. <laughs> the other one, I mean, we, we were f girls in high school. I don't know when this stuff started. They banging <laughs> teachers. The game has changed. So... <laughs> Or maybe like a stay-at-home mom. They don't get enough shine, you know. But if you, you put a stay-at-home mom statue up, I want the full stay-at-home mom experience. I want t out, <laughs> breastfeeding, stay-at-home mom. Like, I don't want the baby on the I want the baby just about to hit the <laughs> Who don't want to see that every day on the way to work? And I sit out giving the baby life and feeding him. And maybe, maybe the Size can be interchangeable, depending on how the economy's doing. <laughs> so if that's a little A cup, Los Angeles is struggling right now. <laughs> New mayor's going to come in. I'm going to turn that A into a double D. Our beautiful city deserves a big <laughs> You want a big <laughs> I want a big <laughs> Big <laughs> Crushing 20 people. Get on my level, cameraman. Hey, uh, 
why we're in the process of tearing down statues, can we start tearing down all the naked white guy statues with a tiny please? <laughs> How come every time a white guy's naked, why well, white guy's a statue, we always got the tiniest when we're naked. We're always deep in thought. I wish I had a bigger Man, I wish my was bigger. We, <laughs> we always stand <laughs> all majestic. We're never smiling. What's there to smile about when you're an inch and a half? Can we, can we just get one statue where we just got a slanging white Just one. I don't care where you put it. Just one slanging white statue. Even the rednecks will be okay with that. All the rednecks are mad. You can't take down Robert E. Lee. That's American history, man. That's our heritage. Put that slinging white dick up there. <sighs> okay, change is good. <laughs> Killing it. Thanks for having me, Kevin. <laughs> you guys got any questions? On the last one, we can talk. Anything you guys want to ask while I'm up here? Where's huh? Where's your wife? My wife? She's at home with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Like, she was disappointed. I mean, you cool, Gabby. Where's your wife at? <laughs> Shut the crib. She would she, be so mad if she was at this show. <laughs> you said there was a lot of taping. I didn't, know, I didn't know this was outside either, Kevin. <laughs> My contract says soundstage. My contract says soundstage. You should have put next to a soundstage. <laughs> you got to read the fine print on your contracts. <laughs> Does anybody else have a question? Nothing? Crazy. <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm happy I was able to come get some pandemic jokes off that I just wanted to burn. <laughs> I was so happy because I was like, damn, these jokes are going to be played out. If I don't get these on camera soon, bam, here comes Kev on stage. <laughs> I'm scared they already had the new statues built by the time I got them out, so appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, I really... Thank you guys, I, you, Kev and, and Tahir and Tony and all the, the stage crew people. You guys have been kind enough to come on my podcast. When you asked me to come on yours, I, I had to say yes, but I did, I did charge you. <laughs> you guys came on my for free. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> I appreciate it because this really looks like a scene in Boys in the Hood when the shooting is about to start. We just need one brother in a wheelchair. <laughs> I don't know why. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming out, everybody on their laptops. Time to click on OnlyFans. <laughs> Where do you go from here? <laughs> Shouts out to Trey Songs in the tripod. <laughs> wow. That was amazing. He's circumcised. I heard. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen a black girl blush. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Neighbors know my name. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why I put my hand up like this is a big crowd. I'm Gary Owen. <laughs> like, like I closed this 10,000 people. Appreciate y'all. All right, y'all. Thanks for having me. I'm Gary Owen. Thank you. Good night.